So I don't usually do ultimate uploads at the weekend, but as we've got so much going on in the league at the moment, I thought why not? In today's video, we're going to be talking over Sheffield Wednesday's point deduction, which is coming into place next season. We've got Aita Karanka, who's recently been appointed as the new Birmingham manager. Paul Cook has left at Wigan. As well as that, we've had quite a few deals go through in the last seven days, which we'll be talking over. And of course, we will be diving into some transfer rumours as well. So if you would like to see more weekend uploads, then make sure to leave a like on today's video. Also, a massive thank you to you guys for 27,000 subscribers. We hit it this morning. A massive thank you for that. But well, without any further ado, let's hop into some of the recent news. So we may as well start out with the big news at the moment, that being the point deduction for Sheffield Wednesday to be imposed next season. Now, Sheffield Wednesday released this statement last night. Sheffield Wednesday acknowledges the decision of the Independent Disciplinary Commission announced today. The club is extremely disappointed that the commission has imposed a 12-point deduction to be applied next season and awaits the written reasons for this decision. The club welcomes the decision that the commission cleared Sheffield Wednesday of the charge of acting in bad faith in its dealings with the EFL Further, the Commission decided not to apply a 12-point deduction this season, thereby imposing relegation. The EFL also released a similar statement that came out last night as well, which goes into a little bit more detail. In the EFL statement, this reads that the club was charged in November 2019 and referred to an independent disciplinary commission, which conducted the full hearing at the end of June 2020 before finding the club guilty, based on the fact that the club should not have included profits from the sale of the Hillsborough Stadium in the club's financial statements for the period ending in July. July 2018. It then goes on to say that they were found not guilty in acting in bad faith towards the EFL which would have resulted in a further point deduction. So basically this point deduction is all to do with financial fair play and when the stadium was actually sold. So we all know that a club can only afford to lose so much money over a three season period. So the three seasons we're taking here with Sheffield Wednesday are the 15-16 season, 16-17 and then 17-18. Sheffield Wednesday then tried to get around their losses by selling the stadium which you are allowed to do, you know that's not against the rules. The problem comes from the fact that basically they didn't sell their stadium in time to cover their losses from the previous three seasons and therefore have been judged to break financial fair play rules. Now the big debating point at the moment is why have they been given this point deduction for next season and not this season. If we do look at the league table from this season, we've got Sheffield Wednesday sat there in 16th. Had the point deduction been imposed this year, they would have been sat bottom of the table and would have been relegated on 44 points. And so one club who you can understand why is not too happy about this is Charlton Athletic. They put out a statement saying that the club is considering a legal challenge following the news that Sheffield Wednesday will receive a sporting sanction that will take effect in the 20-21 season. And point deductions in the championship at the moment are just becoming the norm, aren't they? Obviously, we've seen Wigan in very different circumstances being given a point deduction this season. Last season, Birmingham were given a point deduction for FFP as well. And you have to say that next season just got a whole bunch harder for Sheffield Wednesday, didn't it? You know, 12 points is no easy feat to overcome in the championship. You know, we've seen this season, it would have had them relegated. I do think, though, that this season, the standard at the bottom of the table was fairly high in the end, actually. You know, towards the end of the season, all, every side around the bottom of the table really seemed to pick up their form. Next season, we'll wait and see if the bottom half of the table is as strong. But if it is similar to this season, Sheffield Wednesday really could struggle. So Wednesday fans, I'd love to get your reaction and general fans of the championship as well. What did you make of this news about the point deduction? Get all your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm interested to have some conversations with you guys. Then moving over to Birmingham who have announced Aitor Karanka as their new manager. Now I like this one a lot. I think it's showing ambition from Birmingham. I think that finally they have got that managerial appointment correct. However, it is imperative that they go ahead and back the manager. You know, what he's working with at the moment. For how good Karanka is, he does need to be backed in the transfer market. But I do think that this is an appointment which will excite a lot of Birmingham fans, you know, he's got a promotion on his CV from his time at Middlesbrough, had some very good years there. Birmingham fans, let me know down below, how are you feeling about this one? I think that out of every manager they were linked to, this was like the best possible outcome. I'm really excited to see how he gets on. And then finally today, it was announced that Paul Cook has resigned as the Wigan manager. We knew that this one was coming, but today it has finally been announced and he is now once again the front runner for the Bristol City job. The more I think about that one, the more I think it makes sense actually. Paul Cook, if he was given that backing of a club like Bristol City, I, I, that could be a decent match for me. But now let's hop into some completed deals that we We've seen go through in the league over the past seven days. One club who I think is showing quite a bit of ambition early on is Millwall. Really excited to see if they can mount a serious top six challenge next season because I've been impressed with the business they've done so far. Ryan Woods has rejoined them on a season long loan coming over from Stoke. He spent the second half of the last season out on loan at Millwall where he did really well, recaptured his form at Brentford under Gary Rowett this season. I think that he's had an interesting career. Really liked him at Shrewsbury. At Brentford, I thought, was one of the most underrated midfielders in the league. Made a £7 million move over to 
of Stoke where he just seemed to lose his way, didn't he? I, I can't quite put my finger on why it didn't work for him there. And for Millwall to pick him up on loan, I think his contract with Stoke expires at the end of next season as well. I think they got a really good deal there, exciting time to them. And Millwall have also announced the loan signing of Troy Parrott coming on loan from Spurs. Now, we mentioned this one in the previous transfer room around the video, but they have gone ahead and got this one over the line. So Millwall making quite a few moves early on. We all know about the last Spurs striker who made a loan move over to Millwall. He didn't turn out too bad, did he? But in all seriousness, this is one which I am very much excited about. Millwall were in need of a little bit more firepower and Troy Parrott, I see is a very exciting prospect for the Championship this season. Obviously, with lone players coming in, youngsters from the Premier League into the Championship, it can go one of two ways, but we've seen the success stories recently of people like Rian Brewster, Tammy Abraham. I'd imagine that a lot of Championship clubs would have been in for him, but the fact that Millwall have got this one over the line so early into the window, hey, the club's showing ambition and I'm um, liking what I'm seeing there so far. Another club who's not messing around in the transfer market at the moment is Norwich City as they are looking to instantly bounce back to Premier League football. One of the signs which has interest me has been Placetta, who's coming over from the Polish League. He signed on a four-year deal worth 2.7 million, so Norwich are already splashing a bit of cash, aren't they? I can't say to know all too much about him, but from what I've read, very direct, very pacey player. Daniel Fark had this to say about him. He's an unbelievably interesting player. He has end product pace, bravery, and can offer us something different, particularly in 1v1 duels and in behind. Bally Mumba coming over from Sunderland's another one that's confirmed, can play as a DM and also a right-back. Daniel Fark sees him as more of a right-back from what I've read. They've also completed a few of the free transfers, but one that also caught my eye was the signing of Kieran Dowell. Now, Kieran Dowell had an interesting season. Spent the first half of it out alone at Derby, where things just didn't click for him at all. But the second half of the season actually looked really good once again at Wigan Athletic. In that time, 12 appearances, scored 5 goals and got 2 assists. That fantastic goal he scored against Hull City in the 8-0 win to wrap up his hat-trick. That volley, absolutely superb technique. And Kieran Dowell's an interesting player, still only 22 years old. He's been, you know, quite hit and miss with the loan spells he has had. Uh, at Forest a couple of years ago, I thought he looked really good. Under the right coach, and we all know how effective Daniel Farker can be in the championship, I, I think that Kieran Dow can still be sculpted into something quite special. But then until Middlesbrough complete the signing of Grant Hall, he's coming in on a free transfer after being let go by QPR. Obviously the QPR captain in years gone by. An interesting one, I think that if he does manage to stay fit, and that's the big thing with Grant Hall, could be a decent player for Middlesbrough as Neil Warnock is looking to shore up their back line. And I'm sure as the days go on, we will continue to see more completed deals go through in the league. But now without any further ado, let's hop into some transfer rumours. And starting out with one of the big rumours at the moment, reportedly Cardiff have had a bid accepted for Wigan striker Kiefer Moore. Now there's been quite a lot of speculation around this one. We've had bids put in by QPR and Millwall so far as well. There's been a whole host of championship clubs that have been interested with the asking price only around about 2.1 million. But you've got to say for a club like Cardiff, Neil Harris and Kiefer Moore working together, that's like a dream combination, isn't it? Been really impressed with him this season at Wigan scored 10 goals and got four assists, very mobile player, as well as the physical presence that he is. Actually, no player has won more headers per 90 than Kiefer Moore this season. 8.3 headers he wins every match on average. And for that direct style of play that Cardiff like to go for, but like I say, it's a dream match, really. I think it was an area where Cardiff probably needed to look into a little bit, addressing a few more goals next season. And should they get this one over the line, they're looking in good shape. And another Wigan player who could be off is Joe Geldhart. A £1 million bid has been accepted from Leeds United for the 17 year old. It doesn't seem like all too much for Wigan, does it? I'm very excited to see what Bielsa can do with a player like that. Got a lot of potential, movement's very good, can either play up front or out on the wing. Big, big prospect. And then to one of probably the biggest transfers in England at the moment, Nathan Ake to Manchester City, a bit accepts of 41 million. Now, I'll bring this one up as, of course, Bournemouth having been recently relegated to the Championship. I'm very interested to see how the summer goes for each three of the relegated clubs. It's always a fine balance between selling players to balance the books whilst trying to maintain a quality core group of players who will enable you to challenge at the top end of the championship going into next season. I mean, the Nathan Ake one was a bit of a no-brainer, really, wasn't it? You know, he was always going to make that move to the Premier League. I think he'll do well at Man City. But I would be interested to know from fans of those relegated clubs, who are the players who you think you're really going to have to do absolutely everything to keep hold of if you do want to be challenging up there next season? Another player from Bournemouth that's been linked away recently has been Callum Wilson. There's been quite a few Premier League links. Spurs, the latest one that I saw. I think in each of the relegated clubs, there's obviously going to be a group of players who are happy to stay and dig in 
for the championship and some who are going to want to get that move away. With that Watford squad, I think there's quite a few obvious names that come up where we say, yeah, we don't think they'll stick around for the championship. I mean, there's quality listed throughout that squad, but one of the big names is, of course, Troy Deeney. Very interested to see what happens with him this summer. Now, one link that has come out so far is to Burnley. I mean, this would be the most Burnley-esque signing ever, wouldn't it? Troy Deeney to Burnley. He just fit in perfectly there. It would be superb if they did manage to keep hold of him, though. I mean, his goal scoring record in the championship is absolutely sublime. His last three seasons at this level, albeit a very long time ago, he bagged 20 goals plus in each of them. With Norwich City, I think they're in a better position financially than the other two relegated clubs. I think they had sort of pre-planned their relegation from the Premier League, if you like. But quite a few of their players have been attracting interest recently. Emi Buendia, who we spoke about a few weeks ago, his links to Leeds United are still continuing to rumble on. Reportedly, there has been a bit of contact between those two clubs. No official bid put in yet, but there is interest there. I mean, we all know what a player Buendia is. You know, despite Norwich being bottom of the table, he was still right up there in terms of creativity in the Premier League last season. Absolutely tore apart the Championship last time round. I'd be very surprised if he stayed, but whether he goes to Leeds or not, I'm not so sure. There's also been a link coming out with Timu Puki potentially going to Besiktas. I think that Norwich are going to have to do everything they can to keep hold of Timu Puki. I mean, he is guaranteed goals at this level. Last time absolutely ripped apart the league. Golden boot winner. I think that in the Premier League, when Norwich lost confidence, they stopped creating chances and ultimately the goals dried up for Timu Puki. In the Championship, there's, there's no doubt in his ability. Chris Martin is now a free agent after failing to come to an agreement with Derby for a new contract. And he's not actually been linked with Nottingham Forest, I must say, but the Nottingham Forest live account on Twitter basically pondered the question to Forest fans, would you take it with the club? Are you interested to get your guys' thoughts on that down below? That will cut some interesting responses, but Chris Martin, the free agent, no doubt going to be getting quite a bit of championship interest. This was really the resurgence of his career this season under Koku. You know, previously he'd had a couple of loan spells that hadn't really worked out. I thought that he was finished at this level, but this season scoring 11 goals and getting 6 assists proved to be a really vital player for them this season. Let me know down below if you take him. I'd take him at North End. There was one rumour that came out on Twitter, the Lincoln Ben Pierce to Sheffield United, but ultimately that one didn't have anything behind it. But it's going to be an interesting summer for North End. We do need to start acting in terms of getting some of our players tied down to longer term contracts, with a lot of them now entering into their final year. Should we not manage to reach any sort of agreement with Ben Pearson over the next couple of weeks? Wouldn't surprise me at all to see the bid start coming in. There's been quite a few championship clubs who have been interested in Wigan defender Che Dunkley, who was having a fairly decent season for Wigan up until the point he got injured. In 22 appearances, scored six goals for Wigan. With Bristol City, Watford, and and Nottingham Forest all interested in the centre-back. And despite Malik Wilkes recently signing on a permanent basis for Hull City, he's already been linked away from the club, with Stoke Fulham and Bournemouth all interested, apparently. I still think there's a bit more to come from Malik Wilkes in the Championship. Since lockdown was probably Hull's most effective play, he'll at least look their liveliest going forward, I'd say. Still only 21 years old, so it's one to keep your eye on. But guys, there you have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. So like I say, now we are really getting into this transfer window. I will bring out these videos more and more regularly. It's every day at the moment, really, that we see a bunch more transfer rumours coming out so there's no slowing down with these at the moment is there but like i say guys if you did go in to enjoy make sure to leave a like it is always massively appreciated and make sure to subscribe for some regular championship content like i said at the start of the video thank you very much for 27,000 subscribers but apart from that guys thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one